All right, what's up YouTube? Today we're doing an injection pump removal. The tractor we're working on today is an Alice Chalmers 160. I'm gonna be showing you how to remove the injection pump um, without losing your timing and just the steps that are involved in doing that. And we're also gonna pull the nozzles off this engine because it was running very poorly. So to start out with, I've already taken the liberty of loosening all these fittings. Uh, we're gonna start by taking our fuel lines off. Um, you will lose a little bit of fuel doing this, but it's nothing major. Just to get you a catch pan. And the next step, we're going to take our linkage and our stop cable out, and that's going to get it disconnected from the tractor. And some of these can be a little hard to reach, but uh, you get the right angle on them, and they'll come on out pretty easy. So now we've got our injection pump disconnected on the back side with our fuel lines and linkage. So now we've got to disconnect this drive gear and then we can unbolt the pump from the housing. But first, very important step here is to mark your timing. So you're going to take a small pointed punch, you're going to line it up on your housing here right against your front cover and you're going to give it a good tap with a hammer. Um, and what you want it to do is you want it to create a punch mark that hits both your front cover and your housing to give you a reference for your timing when you put this pump back on the engine. So, the next step is we're going to remove this access cover from the front cover of the engine. And like I said, I've already taken these fasteners out, so they're just kind of stuck in there. So with the access cover removed, you can now access these three bolts. Now on this tractor, we have three half inch headed bolts on the front side of this gear. On some of them, you may have a single nut, um, just depends on what kind of pump it is. So uh, these don't typically have a lot of torque, so they, they break pretty easy. Uh, but you gotta be very careful not to drop any of these pieces down in the front cover or it can cause damage to your timing gears as well as getting chewed up and run between things, uh, which is very bad for the engine. So, I'm being very careful we remove these bolts without consequence. There's one. Um, just a side note, be very careful because most of the times these will have lock washers on them which can get pushed to the bottom of the bolt and will come out as soon as it comes off the threads. Um, you just got to kind of feel of it and be very careful not to lose them. Um, On some tractors, your lower radiator hose will block this cover, um, in which case it becomes necessary to move it. But it's just coolant, so it's no big deal. Um, just reconnect it and fill it when you put the pump back on. So our next step is to remove these half inch nuts from the front side of these studs and then the pump will slide right off the studs and come off the tractor.
Um, some of these can be a little hard to get to, so you have to play around with your angles and just find something that works. Um, you'll notice I'm not using sockets on these. Um, sometimes there's not enough clearance between the nut and the side of this pump to be able to get in there. So end wrenches is the typical tool I use to finish these jobs. Now typically this stud back here can be a little painful to get to, so I'd already removed it earlier in preparation for filming. Um, it just makes life a little easier. Um, but they will usually be three mounting bolts. So now, with all of this disconnected, our pump should just wiggle loose. Um, sometimes you have to play with these few lines a little to get them just right. And in some cases it becomes necessary to take the whole fuel line off the nozzles in order to gain the clearance you need to get them off. And we have now successfully removed the injection pump. Uh, we're going to send this to Alabama Automotive, I'm sorry, Alabama Fuel Injection in Montgomery, Alabama to rebuild. And they'll send us back a brand new rebuilt pump, um, which will already be preset, bench tested, and should be good to run on this tractor. So now we'll get to work removing the nozzles. Um, I've already loosened all these fittings, so what you do is you just remove your hardware from your nozzles. And some of these are set up a little differently, but they all are pretty much self-explanatory. Um, so next you'll remove your return lines from your return rail, and then you'll remove these fittings here. Um, be careful not to lose the copper washers unless you intend on replacing them. Um, they just help seal these banjo fittings against the top of the nozzles. So with that removed and our fuel lines off, um, now we can take our short pry bar and pry these nozzles up. Um, sometimes they'll be a little harder to move because of carbon in the head, um, and in some cases you might not get them out at all. Um, it just depends. Um, so take extreme caution when removing them because um, you don't want pieces of your injector falling down in your cylinder if you were to break it. Notice sometimes these washers will come off the bottom of the nozzles. Um, just be careful. They shouldn't go down into the head because the port at the bottom is no bigger than the bottom size of this injector. Um, so you may just have to fish them out with a small pick. Uh, it's no big deal. Well, that is how to remove an injection pump and nozzles from your antique tractor.